This is Vince Russo's The Brand. What's going on, everyone? It is I, the concussed kingpin, king of the streets, the C- CTE wrestler. <laughs> No, just kidding. Okay, welcome to another edition of Wrestling with Tragedy. I'm your host, the Kingpin, King of the Streets, uh, Angel Medina. Also, my along with me is John Paws, man, two man power trip. And you know, Pierce, Pierce is busy. Pierce won't be able to attend. He might pop on, but it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. Nice. You know, you know. Yeah, where is he? What is he doing? He, I really don't know what he does for a living, uh, to be exact. I mean, he's just, he's working, so he's running late. So we just told him to do it without him. If he pops on, he'll be on in the middle at the end. You never know. All right. Bef- okay. Before we get started, let's get it with our, uh, sponsors called Health Vape, one of the greatest smoking alternatives you got well vaping alternatives they have all the different flavors they got restore vital energy and boost for people who are trying to kick the habit but want to step up their health game definitely check out healthvape.com use promo code mwa pod for 10 percent off doesn't have any type of preservatives any nicotine it is definitely vitamin infused it'll definitely give you the benefits that you need and also keep you doing the vaping that you like definitely check it out healthvape.com sleeves sleeves.com get all your great stuff here the dirty boxers you gotta love that the uh the athletic wear go to sleeves.com use the promo code mwa pod great stuff there i love those dirty boxers absolutely absolutely you know um today we're going to be doing uh rick flair's final match i mean uh it's this week this saturday um him and uh and dry and dry is Andrade El Idolo, yes. His yeah, son in law. Actually, his son in law. Yeah, absolutely. His son in law versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal in a tag team match. I followed it a little bit in regards to um, Ric Flair's, uh, you know, like the interviews, the angles that they're doing, you know. But man, I'm really, really kind of like, um, I'm not saying concerned, but it's just like, oh man, he's at that age. You got a pacemaker in his chest. What is he trying to prove? He is one of the greatest athletes out there. I know he didn't do it the way he wanted to do it, but why risk it? I don't know. To me, and maybe I'm opposite on this, I feel like this is something that he has to do. It's something that he's just like dying to do. He wanted to really have his last match. Yeah, yeah, maybe literally, but no, but uh, he wanted to kind of go out on his terms. I mean, he wanted to do this. Uh, he's been training for over a year. Um, so, and he's got a, a doctor that he uses down in, in uh, Alabama, I guess. So, I mean, he's been prepping for it at least. I mean, so it's not just like willy nilly, he's just going to go out there. It's been over a year in the making that he's going to be doing this. So, yeah, pretty, but John- uh, pretty intense but john didn't he leave on his own accord when he did wrestlemania with Shawn michaels wasn't that his farewell no not a, that was vince making him do it <laughs> he didn't want to do it he didn't want to go out like that even though it was a great match and a great ending he he didn't want to go out like that i mean it was a great match it was a great ending it, it was one of the best to me, one of the best pay per views out there for like the retirement of all retirements yeah i just don't think um the Ric Flair then, again, I hate sounding like he doesn't have it, but it's just, I mean, I it's just hard to, to see him take it to the next level from that, uh, you know, WrestleMania moment. So, um, plus he has the, you know, again, I'm not knocking his scar. I mean, what is he going to wear? I know he's going to wear his boots, you know, but he has this huge scar in his chest. What is, you know, what about his pacemaker? You know, um, what does his doctor say? I mean, giving him the clean bill of health. They said that he could do it. I mean, I guess because he's been doing it for a year, he's kind of been testing the waters with Jay Lethal for a long time, and they must be going through the motions of the match of what he's going to be doing and, and taking bumps. So he seems like he's ready. The doctor seemed like he was okay. I interviewed Rick not that long ago, and it was funny. He had made a statement online where it said, oh, I talked to 40 doctors, and uh, they all said I'm good. So, you know, we were, we were kind of joking around, saying, what, did 39 of the doctors tell you no, and the one, the 40th said yes? But he said, realistically, he only had three or four doctors that he talked to, but his one main doctor has been with him since he had that near-death experience, almost really death and came back to life experience that he's been using, and that doctor had gave him the A-OK. And, you know, I mean, absolutely. I mean, your interview with uh, Ric Flair was very intriguing. I loved it. You know, it was very entertaining. Um 
And uh, but again, I mean, this, you know, Ric Flair, you know, going in the ring, would he be able to do what he can do, you know, doing the flip over the top rope, uh, taking the big high bump, like, you know, his typical bumps. I mean, just can he do it, you know, and what happens if he, I mean, are they going to have the, uh, the emergency units, the EMTs, uh, doctors on call, if anything happens, if his pacemaker does anything that might cause his, uh, his life to, you know, cause him trouble, you know, in his, uh, in the ring. Don't know. I hope not. Jeez. I mean, you hope none of that happens, but yeah, it's been, I guess, something that people are worried about. People are thinking, I don't know, everyone seems to think on the flyer side, the flyer camp, that that they're ready for this and that he's going to be fine. He's going to be okay. Obviously, the tag match, Andrade will be probably wrestling, I'd say, the bulk of the match. Um, and for as far as being safe, I feel like Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett, very safe guys, not going to hurt him, not going to do anything silly, not going to kind of go into the business for themselves or do anything crazy or not. So I feel like he's in good hands all the way around, and I'm sure they're going to have the best, the best doctors available for Nate. If something were to happen, as you know, crazy as that sounds, just in case. Yeah, and um, and so if you think he's going to do most of Andrade, is he's going to be doing the bulk of the match? You think it's just going to be hot tag, tag, boom, boom, boom? You know, the Ric Flair thing does his little strut, chop, 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 tag out type of thing. I would think so. I mean, because you know, why else is it a tag match? You know what I mean? Because he's seventy three, he can't move around as well. Obviously, this isn't you know prime nineteen eighty nine Ric Flair here. I mean, we're talking about twenty twenty two seventy three year old Flair. So I'm guessing that's why Andrade's in there, and obviously Lethal could be a good bump machine, and, and Jeff will be totally safe and fine to work with. So my guess would be Andrade's got to be taking the bulk of the match. But don't you think that's kind of like cheating the fans from the actual Ric Flair, you know, you know, taking the suplexes, the big backdrops, you know, I mean, it's Ric Flair, you know, people go in there to see him take the face bump and, and uh, do his thing. So again, I'm not knocking him. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that it's not going to be a great match, but I think if he doesn't get in the ring as much, I just feel like it's just going to be not say watered down, but I'm just, you're not getting the full Ric Flair, you know? But really, I mean, he's 73. Do we really think we're going to get the uh, the prime flair here? I mean, I hope not. Some of those bumps and stuff. He'll take some. There's no doubt about it because he's been practicing with Lethal and they've been doing bumps. But I just don't think we're going to get, like, craziness. We're not, we're, you know, I wouldn't expect too much. We're probably going to get maybe a bloody brawl is, is probably more than, more than likely. Well, cool question. So every, I'm going through my memory database. I remember Luthez wrestled in a match at one point when he was older. Yeah, he was 70 years old. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he was, and I can't remember. I just remember. I just remember it, but I don't remember. It was for he was. a New Japan Pro Wrestling. He wrestled Masahiro Chono, Chono legend, awesome wrestler. That's actually Fez's protege. So I think he either broke his hip or broke his shoulder in the match, but it wasn't supposed to be a long match anyway. But he was seventy something years old, taking a bump. I think he was seventy two, taking a bump, and he did get injured in the match. Obviously, Chono wins. I think it was a six minute match, but that even was like, wow, why is this a one on one match? It's probably. Tag match, maybe save him a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. But Thez did wrestle when he was 70 years old as well. And also, the individual that was in um, Impact, uh, I can't remember his name. He was an older man in a singlet. Action Mike walked... Jackson? Yeah, there you go. The guy who walked the rope. How old was he? 70. Yeah. Okay. And how old is Ric Flair? 73? Yep. Okay. So, I mean, my thought, my thought is, is that if Ric Flair. I mean, those individuals, while I was watching the match, it was it was intriguing. I mean, I'm not saying it was, you know, five-star match, but it was a good match. So do you think three years would make a difference in Ric Flair since he's older and has the pacemaker that – because you said he's 73, you know, like, well, you know, he's an old man, but those individuals were just three years younger and they were doing fabulous, but they didn't have a pacemaker. I don't know. Tough to tell. I mean – Rick has always been the cardio machine, and disposably he still is in great shape. Um, he's probably in way better shape than I am, and he's like 30-whatever-plus years older than me. So I don't know. I, I got some faith in Flair that he'll be fine as far as gas tank, res wrestling. He's just, you know, he's not going to be like Action Mike Jackson's a small, skinny guy who just was able to maintain some great shape. So it's not going to be like that where he's walking the ropes and, <laughs> and stuff like that. But we'll see, you know, we'll see a decent amount for him. I'm kind of expecting more of like a bloody Flair taking some bumps, definitely the face bump. Um He'll do some old school stuff. We'll see the strut. 
we'll see the chops. I mean, we'll see a good amount of some classic Ric Flair stuff that always has some great cachet with the crowd. I do remember him and Hogan did a bloody match. Uh, and they, oh, they, yeah. just, they went around the arena and they yep. uh, didn't really, I'm not saying they didn't do much, but it was more of a blood blood brawl than an actual wrestling match. So I wonder how that is going to transpire. Um, it's not, it's not the rock and the rock and Hogan, uh, you know, um, how old was Hogan when he wrestled the rock 50? I think 49, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Something and rock like was that. in his thirties, right? Yep. Okay. No, I just wonder, but, um, but again, I mean, this is something that's really, really been getting everybody's attention. I mean, I really was shocked about Jim Crockett, uh, cause I didn't know how, you know, I thought they, Jim Crockett was not dead. I'm talking about like, how did they re re um, energize that company to do this? You know, the money, the, the backers and stuff. How was they able to, uh, you know, get back into the swing things to promote this show? So David Crockett is, you know, helping Conrad Thompson promote the thing. So what they did was, <coughs> excuse me, David Crockett always owned JCP. They just want to make sure that they could secure the trademark. They have their lawyer who does a great job. Mike Dockett does a great job doing that stuff. They call him the gimmick lawyer. Um, he always gets the, the copyrights to everybody. I mean, he helps a lot of guys make sure that they own their intellectual property, make sure they own their names, make sure they trademark their names. So they just, you know, obviously David Crockett had, had the rights to it, but they made sure they went out and they trademarked JCP. So they're actually able to use it. Okay. And um, who else, um, who else is going to be on this pay-per-view? I mean, now that Jim Crockett is promoting it, is it, is it a, a major, uh, major card? So this is a, a huge show because everybody is involved in it as far as like every promotion. So you have uh, WB involved technically because of Jeff Jarrett. You've got ROH involved because of Jay Lethal. You get AEW and AAA involved because of Andrade. There's actually a four-way match with AAA guys. There's a New Japan match. Uh, there's MLW and Impact. There's Josh Alexander, who's the Impact champion, defending his title against the stalwart of MLW, the longest reigning MLW champion, Jacob Fatu. Um, you have a woman's match in there. I mean, there's a lot of um, a lot of interesting matches on the card. A lot, and, and it, there's a lot of matches. There's a four-way match with uh, the guy Takeshita, Alan Angels, Jonathan Gresham, and Nick Wayne. Uh, there's a bunkhouse battle royal. There's a match with the Rock and Roll Express. I mean, there's a, a lot on this card. It's like every promotion ever is, is it, like in this match. So there's AAA, New Japan, WWE, AEW, ROH, Impact, MLW, and then JCP. I mean, there's like eight or and the NWA. There's like eight or nine different promotions involved. It seemed like everybody is kind of getting involved in this show. No, I mean, let's go over this card. You know, um, I know we're just talking about Ric Flair, but let's just see how intriguing yeah. this this yeah. show is. Now, I'm going from the top to the bottom here. Um, let me just start from the beginning. Of course, you know, let me let me do this the bottom to the top. It looks like so. It looks like the the Von Erics are facing the Briscoes. Uh, how does does the Von Erics get? I mean, I'm not knocking them. I'm just I'm just curious. I never really see them out there. I never really hear them that much but they're always popping up on these major major shows um i'm just wondering how they ever i mean i know the von eric name it's just weird that i just see them pop up on this pay-per-view um and not too many people know who they are kind of sort of so they're kevin's kids kevin von eric's Correct. kids so i mean they they hold a lot of weight or that name holds a lot of weight they're actually pretty good i've seen them in mlw a few times they're just mm -hmm. uh, mlw contracted guys mlw doesn't run as often they live out there in hawaii they've got their kids mm -hmm. and they got their wives out there so i mean it's probably expensive to fly them over here all the time to, to be honest but they are pretty good they are in, in great shape and whenever they they wrestle i mean they're pretty over to von eric so um, whenever MLW, because they're under contract with MLW, whenever they kind of have a show, usually the Von Erichs are involved or, or every other show, whatever it is. But that's where they're working primarily is MLW. And obviously MLW made a connection to this show as they have a couple guys on there. So that's how they got the Von Erichs in this show, which is pretty good. Pretty rare matchup against the Briscoe brothers. So what is your opinion in regards to the, the, the Briscoe brothers and the Von Erichs? What do you think is going to be a, a brawl? You're going to be think it's going to be a scientific match, or what's your what's your uh, thoughts? 
Uh, probably a mix of both, uh, but knowing those guys, it'll break down into a brawl. Briscoes are some of the best brawlers, probably one of the best tag teams in wrestling today, easily. Maybe even over the last 20, 19, 20 years are probably the best tag team. I love them. This is such a good matchup just for me, just because I love the Briscoes and I love old school Von Erichs. You know, I love world class. And so naturally you have to like them. So to me, this is a really intriguing matchup. And as far as I know, I don't think this match has ever happened anywhere ever. So it's really first time matchup. Now the individual I'm looking at here uh, is Clark Connor. Um, I don't know why he looks like the the individual from uh, ROH. What was his name? Castle? And, oh, Dolan um, Castle? Yeah, he looks like Dolan Castle in this picture. And Ren, uh, Ren Narita. In, New uh, Japan Pro Wrestling. So Clark Connors is injured, and he's being replaced by Yamura, who's another young guy for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Ren Narita is kind of a young guy, too. Not too familiar with either guy. Um, and it was funny, I was talking to Dr. Tom, because Dr. Tom is agenting a lot of these matches. He'll be working backstage mm -hmm. for... Um, for this this show for Ric Flair's last match card, and he was asking me trying to get a little bit of a scouting report. I said honestly, I haven't seen a lot of these guys as far as the New Japan that guys that are on the show because young guys in New Japan. I know you probably know this; they don't get to really show a lot of their stuff until they start progressing more. So I'm not yeah. really too familiar with either guy. No, oh, okay. Now we got another match right here called Killer Cross versus with his wife Scarlett uh, with uh, versus Harry Smith. You know, so that's one of the cards here. So, um, I don't know. I mean, Killer Cross is a good worker. I mean, uh, Harry Smith, I, he's a decent worker. So, I think that might be a, a decent match. What's your thoughts? So, they fought before on uh, Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, which is that no ring, no ropes. I mean, not no ring, no ropes, um, no poles. It's literally just a, a ring. And it was a grapple, basically a grappling match. So I feel like that's what it's going to turn into again with those two big behemoths. They're going to be a grappling match. It's probably going to be some nice, strong style, stiff match. Probably going to be pretty good because Killer Cross is good. And Harry Smith is, you know, he's pretty on point. He's he's always been re really good. Kind of flew under the radar for a long time because WWE didn't do much with him. The tag team stuff, but, you know, they never pushed tag teams. But I feel like that one's going to fly under the radar. Should be pretty good. Rematch. I got you, man. Uh, Jacob Fatu versus Josh Alexander. You know, you know. I mean, any type of Samoan is going to be a definitely good match. Yeah, Fatu is good. I like him. Yeah, he impressed me a bunch of times. I've seen him in MLW. He reminds me of the Tonga Kid, and he looks like, uh, you know, uh, Rakishi a little bit. I mean, I know uh, that's his kid, but I'm just. I'm I was just gonna. Say, I, I hope he reminds you of the Tonga Kid because that's the, <laughs> that's Tonga Kid's son. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. it's funny, like. They have all the Samoan guys, right? They, the WWE, they have the Usos, Roman Reigns, uh, Solo, Sakaya, who, who's um, another Rikishi kid. Jacob Fatu should be in WWE. He's that damn good. He's almost like um, Umaga. Remember Umaga several years ago? Yeah. That's who he's very reminiscent of. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, he should get the opportunity. You know, maybe they don't want the whole company overrun by uh, Samoans. I don't know. I mean, but if he's a hell of a talent, bring him in. You know, yeah. I mean. Definitely is going to look like uh, be part of the bloodline. Uh, you know, that definitely be a good part of the gimmick. Now, the next match is uh, Ray, um, Ray Phoenix and Taurus with a big old damn bull head. Uh, Mantar <laughs> and Laredo Kid and Bandito. If I can got Mantar, that's just, that's just uh, I mean, I don't mean to bury the guy, but that's kind of interesting. You know, have you ever read, uh, have you ever seen the Taurus? Oh, yeah, he's very good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does he wrestle in the gimmick? No, he takes that off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I figured that big head. Yeah. I figured that'd be hot. You know, but also, again, another thing is the Wolves, you know, David Rich Davey Richards and Ed Eddie Edwards versus the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. That, that's going to look like, um, you know, Motor City Machine Guns, hell of a talent, definitely got the skills. You know, I mean, they're older but wiser, and I think they still uh, got, you know, ain't losing a step. Now, in regards to the Wolves, I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying Eddie Edwards is uh, not talented, but the dude gained a lot of weight. You know, there was a lot of pork chops in that buffet room in the uh, Impact. <laughs> you know, um, you know, Davey Richards looks the same, you know. So yeah. how were they able be, to bring him back? That'll probably be a show stealer, that match. Now, David Richards retired and went into like uh, um, her stories that he was going to be into the you know, EMT. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, first so, aid and stuff. Yeah. So, did that, that's what, well, did he go into that or that's something that was just on the, 
the, on his thoughts at the time. No, he went into it. That was like his full time job. He was doing it. But I guess wrestling, you can never retire from wrestling, especially when you're that young. You're not going to get, you know, you're not going to quit the business. So it's probably just uh, eating at him. I know he wanted to come back. So good to see him back and uh, doing pretty good out there. And just curiosity. What, I mean, what was the reason why he retired? Was he burnt out? Was he, you know, was he doing, uh, um, you know, just. I mean, I'm trying to think who left the ring and now I forgot his name. Uh, he left WWE. He was in a, uh, I'm just getting a brain fart. Um, oh my God. He wrestled. He was, it'll come to me, but he retired. He left. He walked out of uh, impact appeared in WWE. Um, and then uh, he just quit, you know, um, I forgot. It'll hit me in a second. I'm not sure. He had the mutton chops. Throw out some short dudes and uh, Impact, you know. Short guys? That was in uh, Impact. And also he was in WWE at WrestleMania. He wrestled, I think he wrestled, man, I'm told you this concussion is killing me. Um, It'll hit me. It doesn't matter. You know, but the next match I hear I'm looking at is Car- uh, Kerry and Rick Ricky Morton versus uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson. All right, man, that's well, what's your thoughts about that? A lot of sons of wrestlers in that one. I don't know about that. Uh, that, that one, I'm not sure how it's going to be. I love me some Ricky Morton. He actually can still go, even though he's 60. He's still pretty good. I haven't seen his kid wrestle before. I haven't seen a lot of Brock and Pillman still, you know, he's still kind of green in the business. He's still has a long way to go, but that could be a good one. I'm sure if it's uh, Ricky Morton's kid, I'm sure he's probably a pretty good seller. You know what I mean? He's probably pretty good. You know what's funny, though? I mean, when you say Ricky Morton's 60, yeah. and 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 when I hear about individuals that I grew up with, and they're like, and then you're like, I can't, Ricky Morton can't be 60. That means he's 10 years older than me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yep. It's just, it's always, I'm not saying they were older. It's just like, didn't, like, I would have thought that he would have been in the seventies, like Ric Flair or, you know, it's just, I just can't wrap my brain around certain individuals that I'm like, well, you know, he's only five years older than me. He's only 10 years older than me. Yep. You know, it's just my brain during the time as a kid, I just figured they were just way older, you know, you know, who, any wrestler that you, that are you shocked that you're kind of close in age that you thought they were way older? Hmm. For some reason, Rey Mysterio, I always just because he's been wrestling literally since '89, I was always like, "Wait a second, I'm not like I'm not that much younger than Rey Mysterio." You know, what I mean? that's like to me, I'm like, "What the hell?" He, you know, he's still in his 40s. Like, wait, how the hell is that possible? I so. think when worlds collide, when he was what I can't from pronounce the name, um, Cal, Cal, it was what a C, um, but he wrestled there, and he was like what 16, 14, and worlds collide. What was he? No, it was, own... 19, it was 1994, so he was 19 at that point because he started in 89 when he was 14. Uh-huh. So he must have been 19 at that point. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's what I remember him, and he was young then. So, And then in ECW, I mean, I mean, how old is he anyway? I mean, I'm 50. 47, I think. Let me see. Let's take a look here. Let's use the, the database here. Ray Mysterio, he is at the age of a whopping, you're right, 47. Absolutely. It's just weird that you just watch these guys again. You're like, 47, he's younger than me? Fuck. You know, but he started young, so, you know. But to me, I'm like, wow, he's only seven years older than me. I was like, wow, that's kind of surprising. Just because in 89, like, you know, he's wrestling in 94, he's wrestling, I'm freaking in like middle school or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, like wow, this is just shocking to me. Yeah, but he was not able to get the uh, the Ray Mysterio name, the Mysterio name, until he proved himself. That's why he was called. Um, I can't pronounce it in Spanish, like the little hummingbird or some shit like that, you know. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I mean, that's, I mean, it's just weird that they just were not that far off in age, you know. Um, the the Bunkhouse uh, Battle Royal. I mean, like you said, do you know who's going to be in that? They announced a bunch of names. I know your boy Bubba Ray Dudley's in it. I know that. Okay, why is he not doing another or like a, a main event type of match? Not main event, but you know, a singles match or I don't know. Yeah. He hasn't been really wrestling much. I know. I saw him in NWA where he did like some type of gimmick where he walked in the ring and he was kind of like the commissioner, and then um, you know, he was just standing there and then he gets jumped. He got jumped and beat up. Um, it was just weird. It was just uh, now you know. Um, you know, the aces and eights guys were in the ring, you know, older, you know, 
former individuals that were part of that group. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just that he's not – I've never seen him active anymore, so I was just wondering why he's not being active. I mean, Bubba's what, 52? I was going to say, he's he's up there in age. He's getting up there. It's probably why he's slowing down. Um, Let me look here. Bubba Ray Dudley. I think he's probably 51. Have you noticed that he's like happier, <laughs> a lot happier lately? You know, completely off topic. Have you noticed that? Yeah, he looks a little bit mellow. Um, it yeah. really threw me, I'm not saying it threw me. He's 51. So, um, you like know, it's I, fun. I saw him at a show, uh, Black Label Society. Remember a few months ago, he was really cool, took a picture with me and stuff. Usually he's not that friendly at the at these shows, but he uh, he's turning a, a new leaf, I guess. Maybe he mellowed out. But yeah, but he's 51 years old. But you know what's funny, though? It's like um, the one that throws me off. It says that he was trained by Johnny Rosin, debuted in 91. Right? Right. Not true. I'm not. Dude, I never saw him. I've been in Johnny Ross since I was 17. I came back in, I left and came back in 94. Never saw a picture on the wall. Never. I'm not saying he was it. It's just I keep asking, like, dude, I, I asked the boys. I'm like, yo, was he there? I mean, I don't remember him ever being around. Never stopping by, only for the show, you know, the 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 impact angle and, and stuff like that. But I never, ever, ever saw any type of – and it says here on Wikipedia that he was at Gleason's Gym and debuted in 91. He was trained by Johnny, you know? Wow. So huh. I really – I mean, again, I'm not knocking it. It's just I just don't recall – ever seen any type of evidence that he was from that area from Gleason's. And, but again, I, I don't know everything, but I just know who was there and I saw all the time. So it was Vito, I, Vito, Prince Nana, Devon. Let me say, what was it? Matt Stryker. Um, that's as far as I can know, that's it. Little Jeannie, Sweet Destiny. She used to be female wrestler. So yeah, there were certain individuals that were there when when I was training, you know. So that's the only thing. But anyway, back to the card here. Uh, so the other thing is the next thing is the uh, Jonathan Griffin, Nick Wayne, Alan Angels, and uh, Kon Konosuku. I can't pronounce his Japanese name. So Takeshita. Takeshita. No, no offense, Takeshita. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pronounce it. No disrespect. It's just uh, that was pretty uh, hard for me to pronounce. But uh, what do you think of this match, man? I don't know. That could be a, a sleeper good one because Gresham is pretty good, but different style than the other guys. Like Nick Wayne is young as hell, but he's like a good high flyer. Alan Angels is pretty good. Uh, he left AEW, wasn't getting enough TV time, but he's kind of proven with his matches and impact. Like, wow, he could actually go pretty good. And Takeshita, he really has surprised me. He's had great matches in uh, AEW, and it's funny. People, like when he wrestled Moxley, people are like, oh, great match. Moxley can't do that style at all, and he kind of stunk in the match, and Takeshita carried him. So I was like, wow, this guy is young guy, you know, kind of new really to the United States. I'm like, but damn, he's carrying this vet veteran who everyone thinks is so great. Like, he's pretty good. And I'd say he had a pretty good match with Eddie Kingston. So, I don't know. It, it, it could, that could be a good match. The guy Takeshita is good. Absolutely. Well, I mean, and of course, the typical, you know, uh, main event, you know, Ric Flair, you know, Andrade's, uh, Lake J. Lethal, and uh, Jeff Jarrett in the main event. Of course, you know, we're already talking about that. But also, they're doing a meet and greet with Brian Danielson, Ric Flair. I mean, it's pretty pricey. Um, yeah, uh, Brett, Brett Hart, he's gonna be there. Uh, CJ Perry, Lana, La oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, uh, she'll uh, have a long line, I guarantee that. Miro is gonna be there, but it's funny how it's broken down. And like, um, Kevin Nash is gonna be there, Mick Foley is gonna be there, Jay Lethal, of course, Baby Doll, Andrade's, uh, Karen Jarrett, uh, Matt, Matt Hardy, who else, Bully Ray, of course. Um, the good brothers, um, that probably be in the battle royal. David Penza, Barbie Blank, uh, Kelly Kelly, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, Chelsea Green, Ray Phoenix, Laredo Kid, and of course, Sotoris, Swaggle, uh, Amy, oh, Alita, Dumas. You know, I was her first match. Um, really, yeah, yeah, that, I didn't uh, know that. I mean, not wrestling match, she we were in, um. Uh, West Virginia, and um, it was me versus Vito. She was my manager. She was my valet. 
and um she uh then she's got she got a power dri- power driven and Paul Heyman really took a shining to her in regards to how she took that bump. You know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. She wrote in the book, you know, she wrote it in her book, my name and all that stuff. I was really, you know, I really appreciated it. You know, she's awesome. You know, she's good people, you know. But we had some good times. You know, I met her before. I'm actually surprised how small she is. You know what I mean? Like on TV, for some reason I thought she was like taller. Like I for some reason I was like when I met her, I was envisioning her being like five ten or something, but she's not. She's pretty small. Yeah, she's tiny. I mean, but she's yeah. not I but mean she's, she's as hell, yeah. Like to do that, the bumps she takes and stuff, yeah. Oh yeah, she took she took hella bumps. I mean, like I said, she is awesome. She she's the most nicest person. She'll do anything for you. She's so laid back. Um, she's just she, she's just phenomenal, man. I'm just trying to see if I can find the picture of us wrestling. And um, but anyway, while I'm doing that, the Ric Flair situation again. I'm just concerned that something's going to happen. Um, I hope it doesn't, but I really hope that. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a, such a great match. That's the only concern. You say, yeah, he's been training for a year and nothing's going to happen. We hope. We hope. But the way I'm, they built up the match, I think they could save Flair a little bit because did you see that they did the old parking lot angle where Lethal beat him up in the parking lot. Then all of a sudden, Jarrett comes. He pretends he's breaking it up and he literally starts potato when Flair doesn't blade. Either, which is pretty funny. Jared is really letting him in, so he cut him open the hard way, and Flair was bleeding like crazy. So, you know, maybe they could save him a little bit by making it more of a brawl and not as much as a wrestling match just to save his body and save him some bumps. But either way, I think there's going to be a lot of blood in the match. And, uh, you know, red equals green, right? So I feel like maybe that'll be the, the selling point for a lot of people and maybe get people to, to you know when when you have the replays and stuff to get interested like hey you want to see this match it was a you know bloody mess or it, it was um something to behold great brawl well i mean yeah like i said it was a good promo i was really interested i mean it reminded me of the um dusty roads versus four horsemen in the parking lot where they say you know make a count break my hand so um, it, I don't know why it reminded me of that, but it, it was interesting. I mean, like I said, um, they're trying to make it to the best show ever. I think it's going to be one of the best shows ever. I'm just concerned about Ric Flair and something happening to him. I hope I'm not trying to jinx him. It's just I'm just showing my concern in regards to that. What do you think, though, in general about Jarrett being involved and him being on the show? Because he technically works for WB. So are you shocked by that? Like, are you thinking like, oh, that's kind of surprising that they let him do that show? Well, I mean, WWE is being kind of a little relaxed. I mean, look at uh, Mickey James. She did appear on one of the pay-per-views when she did the Hardcore Country and she was the knockout champion. They even mentioned it. So maybe they are being a little bit more like, like kind of like, okay, brother, you know, we, you know, you can go, you know, I mean, they ask permission, so I don't see a problem with it. So, I mean, these, why did you think it was going to be a problem for them to let him let him go and do that? Do that? I was just surprised. It's like, wow, if he didn't work for WB, okay, no problem. Of course, he's going to be involved because of Conrad and doing the podcast. Yeah. But then I saw he had the job with WB. I was like, man, I wonder if he said to them, "Hey, yeah, I'm already booked. I'm, I'm working this match. I can't, you know, I can't give it up because it's a really cool spot to be in, obviously. And I'm sure there's going to be a you know nice little uh, hefty price tag you know they're gonna have to pay jeff for too i don't know i'm surprised because sometimes wb can be maybe not lately but used they used to be really strong arming people they don't want you doing this they want you doing that you know they'll cancel you off of this they'll cancel you off of that so i don't know they seem to be more lax i guess but i was just surprised like wow he's actually gonna wrestle not even just he's gonna be there he's gonna be wrestling well i mean they're not using him he's he's on the legends contract so i mean they're not really no, he's he's, gonna... he's the referee on SummerSlam for Usos versus the Street Profits. I didn't know that. Yeah. Why is that? They said they they needed somebody, and they're it's in Nashville, so you know he fits in. Obviously, being being supposedly from he's really from Hendersonville, but they say he's mm-hmm. from Nashville. So I mean, he fits the bill perfectly, and he's going to be like the enforcer referee in that match to make sure everything goes down. They kind of set it up at the last pay per view with the referee didn't see one of the Street Profits had a shoulder up, so they were setting it up that they need a referee that that knows what they're doing and 
being in Nashville, they're going to have the hometown referee. It's a little hometown cook in there. So he's doing that, and he's the head of live events. He's the uh, SVP, the senior, I guess he's senior vice president, whatever you want to call it, the, of the live events for WB. So he's got a corporate position with them as well. Yeah, but the problem is, and again, I'm not knocking. I'm just trying to think of the angle. I figured they would have just like build it up to a point so Jeff Jarrett could be, you know, like, like let's say it was, uh, you know, special. Uh, what was his old show? The you know, like almost like a, you know, talk show on WWE uh, when he was uh, Jeff Jarrett. Um, didn't he have a segment on WWE at one point? Uh, was did he have? His, I don't think he had his own talk show. No, he didn't have like the Piper's Pit type of thing. I, think I have this like vague memory, man. I'm you know, anyway, yeah. it doesn't matter. I mean, I think they should have done something like that to kind of like kind of you know introduce him back and then you know, I'm doing this for the special event, you know, blah blah blah. And then something happens where he, you know, they did something to him that he's like, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm going to be the referee, blah blah blah. You know, I figured they would have just laid that uh that pathway to um for that you know it's a big weekend for him part of SummerSlam, he's going to be on the show and then the next night can be wrestling flyer i mean it's a big weekend for jeff well summer slam is on when uh, su- uh sunday saturday saturday it, oh is it saturday so they're doing the uh, the yeah the rick Fl- i figured everything the rick flyer will be on sunday yeah see i was here i didn't even know i thought it was actually 31st yeah it is sunday yeah, it's funny, like the promotion of it, and I just talked to Conrad. The interview will be up soon, but I just talked to Conrad about it. And WB SummerSlam has like no promotion. I feel like they're not talking about it. If they are talking about WB, it's about Vince's retirement and you know all the scandal and stuff. But they're really like ESPN, TMZ, Rolling Stone, they're all covering Ric Flair's last match, not covering SummerSlam. So I was like, wow. You know, obviously, you know, WB is going to have more people there. And it's going to be a bigger show, and so many people are in town for SummerSlam. But it just feels like the media is really in a world when they're covering the Flair stuff more than WB. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of interesting that they're, uh, but like I said, it's a bigger thing. It's, I mean, Ric Flair's final match. I mean, that is big news. SummerSlam is a tradition, it's one of the toppest top pay per views out there. But I mean, you get SummerSlam every year, you're not going to get one Ric Flair last match. He's not the Stones. He's not going to do a world's tour. You know, he's not Steve Carino. Oh. <laughs> got, do you, you know. think, uh, do you think this is really his last match? It has to be. It has to be. I mean, the, the, you can't, I mean, none of us are getting younger. And I mean, like you say, he's 73, you know, what he's going to wait another two years to, you know, to do a match. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's going to work. You know, I don't know. I was talking to somebody today that's very friendly with Rick, and they're like, oh, I bet you this is a test run. I bet you has another match. And I said, Well, you know, they're calling it his last match, so it kind of should be his last. But they were saying it's in his blood. He can't, like, he can't not be be doing it. So I don't know. We'll see. It's crazy to see, like, the, the effort behind this. All the promotions involved, all the money involved. It's it's in the Nashville uh, Municipal Auditorium, whatever you call it, where Flair and Steamboat wrestled, where Flair and Macho Man wrestled. It's just like, man, the the the, the history around is crazy. And then you look at they have this thing where you can get your own figure made of Flair. I don't even. It's got to be like four hundred dollars or something. But you stand with him. They take a, a surround sound of you. And they end up making a like an actual action figure for you and Flair together. So they have that thing going on. They have you know the, all the uh, the posters, all these different posters you can get. Um, the the ring, the ropes, you can get that. The uh, the turnbuckles, you can get that. Ric Flair is an action figure from JCP. You can get that. I mean, everything surrounding it is crazy because it's like okay, WB, they're the marketing machine. They they, they make you can make you so much money. They were doing nothing with Flair. He had the Legends deal. He was, comes out once a while on TV and he did nothing. All of a sudden now he's a free free man. He's got uh, documentaries coming out. You know he's got all this like ESPN's following around, TMZ following around, Rolling Stones following around. He's got all this new merchandise. He's uh, doing uh, new new product placement. He's doing Car Shield. He's doing some sort of uh, new viagra thing too i just saw yeah i um, saw it. that was pretty funny yeah that was a funny commercial so it's like holy shit like conrad 
and Flair have done more with Flair's name in the last like three months than WB did with him in years. It's like holy, like they really are like capitalizing on it. And the collector's market, they want the Flair figure, they want the signature, they want you know the poster. They have like three different posters. They all look awesome. If you're like a big collector, you probably want to get each one. So they're really going all out for this thing. No, I agree, man. I mean, like I said, Ric Flair is making money. You know, I mean, he he is, you know, he's benefiting from his name, of course, and he is reaping the rewards. And if this if this is his last match, then he's gonna market every little piece out there, uh, you know, ring ropes and all that, and definitely, uh, definitely gonna benefit it from it. Will you be getting any Ric Flair merchandise? I'm looking. Let me take. Are you, you, are you going to get any? No, I'm just looking at the website since I'm already oh. on it. Uh, let's take a look here. They got the poster, twenty four ninety nine. Actually, one hundred and ninety nine dollars for the Ric Flair action figure. Uh, two hundred forty nine dollars for a signed last match canvas plaque. Hundred bucks for a turnbuckle. They got the Ric Flair woos wine. Um, <laughs> they got the wine. Uh, what else they have? Uh, they got T-shirts. They got tumblers. They got shot glasses. Um, what else is this? A, a bandana and a Ric Flair last match bandana. So I mean, uh, but the most priciest one is the actual uh, signed autograph canvas plaque and the actual Ric Flair autograph uh, doll. So. If you're really, I mean, $30 bottle of wine. I mean, like I said, it's just, I don't know. If it comes across it, I definitely, uh, I'll definitely, uh, might get something. You? I am interested. Uh, I'm almost afraid to look because there's so much good stuff. I don't want to spend that much money. You know what I mean? So I gotta, I gotta do it wisely, but I'll probably get some sort of collectible, some sort of item from there for sure. What do you so, think about the roast of Ric Flair though? What do you think about the roast? Oh yeah, um, I saw the to commercial for it. It's on when is this this week, right? I think it's isn't it Friday? Isn't aren't they doing it on Friday with the roast? Doesn't it kick a, kick off the night or whatever, basically leading into the weekend? Let me take a look. I really don't know. I mean, like I said, I haven't been following it to the T, but I know for a fact that it was supposed to be a roast. And again, you threw me off that. Oh, it's Saturday, some uh, summer slams, and and I'm like, oh, I thought it was gonna be Saturday, and then Friday was gonna be the roast. So I just didn't know. So I think the roast is Friday. Saturday is all those panels and stuff and the actual StarCast convention and different people coming in out. Then Sunday will be Flair's last match. So it's, it's a three-day uh, three thing. I mean, it's pretty uh, pretty in-depth here. It's on Fight TV um, yep. July 29th from 6 p.m. So we yep. got to get you to order this stuff and, and give us a – just um, like a synopsis of everything, you know what I mean? Or maybe we'll have peers do that. It's two hundred forty nine dollars for a platinum bracelet, two hundred one hundred seventy nine dollars for gold. You get the mega weekend bundle for two forty nine, ultimate weekend bundle one twenty nine. Meet and greet, Ric Flair's last match. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's so much things you can definitely, uh, definitely buy. You know, so oh shit, there's a ten table, a uh, table for ten, fifteen hundred dollars. Holy moly. Best seat in the house. T table for 10 includes laminated collector's ticket, one bottle of Rose Rose, uh, 10 drink tickets, and 10 exclusive Ric Flair trading cards. Whoa. Damn. After party. Uh, $79 after party. Um, VIP. Uh, mission is you just go to the hang hangout with some of your favorite. Or Fuck that. Uh, I guess I've been in the business so long. I'd be like, I wouldn't pay that shit, uh, you know. But um, that's hey, just these, me. These fans, they they spend. It's crazy. Look at the AEW fans; they spend like crazy. No, it's fine, man. I, I respect them. It's just being a wrestler, and you know, certain things I just will not pay for since I've been in the oh, business yeah. for so long. It's not an yeah. ego thing. It's just it's just how my brain works, you know. But I mean, again, I mean, this is going to be a very. Uh, I think uh, a very awesome pay per view. There's going to be a lot of individuals there. Definitely check it out. I mean, this is Ric Flair's last match. I think this is going to be uh, very interesting. Um, I'm going to keep my eye out on it. And uh, would I watch it? No, but I'm definitely going to keep my eye on it. You going to watch it? 
Uh, yeah, I'm interested in in the pay per view. I'm a flyer mark, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm interested in it for sure. I'll probably get it. It's only thirty four ninety nine compared to the other like AEW. I think it's fifty or more. So I mean, it's eleven matches, so it's not going to be short. There's no way. I mean, you think you're going to get your money's worth? But thirty four ninety nine. I mean, I remember back in the day ordering pay per views in the nineties. They were thirty four ninety nine. So I don't know. It seems like a decent deal. I'm interested. Put it this way, man. I mean, like I said. You're definitely going to benefit from it. You're definitely going to love it. I just watched the uh, – I'm going to watch the uh, the news from <laughs> – and make sure that – breaking news, Ric Flair is taken to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Oh, so man. so I'll just keep an eye on that and make sure, uh, you know, I can talk about that. But anyway, fans, you know, um, we didn't really have much. We just wanted to talk about the Ric Flair uh, situation, about his last match, his retirement. You know, it's just – it's going to be very interesting. So definitely check out, you know, Ric Flair's last match, a pay-per-view. It's definitely full of a lot of uh, top stars from the business. You're definitely going to benefit. Definitely check out the two-man power trip with John Paws. He has a lot of great interviews on that show. Um, I'm, I watch it all the time when I'm going to work. You know, I listen to it. I don't watch it because I'll crash because I wasn't an accident, you know, <laughs> and I can't really see, not see, but. I'm sensitive to light. So definitely check it out. You're definitely going to love it. You're not going to regret it. John, do you have anything to plug for this weekend? No, just follow uh, Two Man Power Trip at Two Man Power Trip on Twitter and Instagram. Um, follow me on uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash TMPT Empire. And of course, TMPT Empire.com. But I got the uh, Conrad Thompson interview. Very, very good. Over an hour with Connie talking about Ric Flair, talking about his health, talking about the last match, talking about the card. We break it all down. So good stuff there from Connie. Well, absolutely, man. For again, it is I, the Kingpin, King of the Street, Suntan Superman. We'll definitely catch you on the next Wrestling with Tragedy. One of our, we're still working on some topics, but definitely it's going to be something interesting that you fans will like. Again, check out Two Man Power Trip with John Pauls. Watch Wrestling with Tragedy on the Russo's brand. You're not going to regret it. We'll see you soon. Nothing but love. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs>